Hello and welcome down onto the tech desk and in today's video we're going to be looking at this special piece. Okay, so this is a one-handed keyboard that I've been sent. You may not have seen this and you certainly haven't bought one because this is in beta stage at the moment and it's called, it says there, the Side Quest and it's from Dunwyvern Game and Matt over at Dunwyvern Game has sent me this to kind of beta test. So play about with it, um, go through everything I do like about it and don't like about it and then feed back to them so they can potentially change it in the future to get a product they're going to release to the public to buy. Now in this video we're going to be talking about, can I go over the physical features, the way I use it and the way I have been using it and then we're going to go through the software. But what I want you guys to do is in the comments below is stick anything you'd like to add on here. Maybe things you do like, maybe things you don't like in there as well, because it can always be changed, because as we said, it's in beta version. But get it down in the description. If there's something you're thinking, do you know what that would need? That would need one of these. Get it down in the comments so, so Matt can read it, and he will read it, and hopefully your ideas will be taken on board. Okay, so I got sent this a few weeks ago. Um, with a letter and kind of like instructions. This is how uh, this is how beta stage it is. I've got the instructions on some A4 pieces of paper. And it says, Dunwyvern Gaming is excited to welcome you to the SideQuest Early Access Beta Test. This one-handed gamepad was designed so that users everywhere could have more options for customization. As a company developed by gamers, for gamers, we wanted to create a product that would be elevate the performance with mechanical switches, a truly curved ergonomic keypad for the highest comfort and the latest in LED control. Over the years, we've noticed lack of sustainability within the one-handed keypad market. Our goal is to fill that gap. We inside of our timing greatly. Brilliant. So there's a little bit about it, which I'll talk about. And there's the software. Again, some really cool stuff in the software, which we'll talk about later. So if I go over the physical dimensions of it, so it is quite a, a quite a large piece. I mean, I've got probably average sized hands, okay? So you can kind of gather the, the size of it. But if we measure it, so like from here to here, we're looking at about 18, 18 and a half centimeters wide there. And then from right at the end, they're about 21 centimeters there. And then if we look at the depth, this, this bit here, the highest bit is around four centimeters high. And then there's about two and a half there up to the back, which is around, again, four centimeters there. USB cable that comes out the back there, really good quality USB cable. If there's anything that doesn't change, I wouldn't like this, this cable to change because it is beautiful, really nicely quality and braided. It's around two meters 20, it's a really long one, so I haven't got an issue with that. Uh, it is permanently attached to there. Okay, so there's no removing it from there. Um, as you can see, it is 3D printed at the moment. Um, whether that changes or not, probably will be. But at the moment, you see it's 3D printed with the lines here, and you can certainly see it on the back there. And it says side quest. On the bit, four large rubber feet, which is brilliant. Stick it, I mean, it properly sticks to the desk. It really does, superb. So we have 26 keys. I say so all these white things are keys. So there's 23 here, three there, and then we have another one, so we're 27 on the thumbstick. And then just to spin over the location of the key, so we have three at the top there, then underneath that a line of five, then a line of six, then a line of five again with one being larger, and then at the back here a line of four, again with one being larger. The thumbstick on the left there is analog, free moving, at slight angle, and then just above that there is a profile button. This profile button doesn't work at the moment, but what you'll be able to do is, when we talk about the software, is you'll be able to ping them along the software and you'll be able to change your profiles, change your new game profiles to one of those on there. These keys here, they're Cherry MX low profile RGB speeds. And if I just take off one of the keycaps, just to show you, again, these are 3D printed. It wouldn't surprise me if these change for the full release and the keys are in there. So it's 45 CN operating force, one millimeter pre-travel, 3.2 millimeters total travel, and there is no click. So it will be completely silent until it bottoms out and then it taps. Okay, and we'll do a, we'll do a sound test in a minute. The switches under here, they're, they're not removable. Um, they only come in one flavor at the moment. Um, there may be more, they maybe make them removable, but I'm saying it, it wouldn't be hard just to kind of unsolder these and remove them anyway, but hey, that might be a thing for the future. Now, the best bit about this is this kind of pad here, this bit here. This is where your hand rests. Now, this has been designed so you can keep your hand on there, not move and touch all of the buttons. OK, so let me just get my hand set. So that's where my hand would sit when I'm when I'm playing with this. This is where my hand set. OK, now, if I just keep my hand on it so I don't move it, I'll be able to show you this in much better detail. OK, so the ones at the top there. Yeah, great. That one there, line there. That line there, that line there, and that line there. I could even probably go for another line behind there, but don't need don't need to. So I don't need to move the ball of my hand, this bit here, to reach every single key on that keypad there. So you have access to 23 buttons without moving 
your hand. Okay, now we have the three here, so the three on the thumb. This one is a bit of a stretch. I, I kind of have to move my hand to reach that one, but as you'll see with a lot of the um, a lot of the presets on here, this is probably just a menu button anyway. So even if you're playing, this isn't my gaming mouse, by the way. So when you are gaming, you might just want to use that with your finger anyway, just to be tapping that. And then also we've got to do a sound test on the keys. Okay, so let's cut the music and let's do a sound test on them. So pretty much silent until you bottom it out where there's a nice clack to it. Now the side quest is going to be compared to like the Razer and the, and the Logitech one-handed keyboards. I'm not sure you can compare them directly because I think this is just a little bit different and it is focusing on the ergonomics more than anything. For me, all of these keys are perfectly lined up. I mean, I could even take any more, but I don't think it need it. For, for, for games, I think 23 there and three there is enough. The joystick here, the angle, I think that's fine for me. This angle here, I think if I'm there, I mean, a lot of gaming keyboards have it out there. So the kind of like left and right, if you're using this for your left and right, it's kind of almost up and down, whereas this actually feels left, right, forward and backwards. Um, some of my games I've been using this analog stick. Some of my games I've been using the WASD on here. When I put my hand down, these are kind of the four that I go for. So I've put in then WASD. And if I just ping the keys off, you'll see that a few of them have the indentation on the top there. They were all in a line on here. I've just moved them because they can all be moved apart from obviously the ones that are a bit larger on here. So as I said, there is some really good stuff here with the software. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm sat at the Mac, so I'm just gonna plug it in here and we'll put it on for the Mac. Um, I'm usually having it on my gaming PC and behind me, but I can use it for the purposes of it. The software itself runs on Windows or Mac, so it's either one, but it saves on the the PC itself. So I've saved a load of presets on my PC that won't be changed over to here. But before that, just gonna show you here what it does. So let's just knock the lights off like so. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna plug it in and I'm just gonna show you that it's just a nice cool startup sequence. Okay, so that's what started up now. And now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna flick over, I'm gonna load up the software. So here we are then with the software. Uh, you go to dunwyvern.com and then you'll see this as front and center. And all you're gonna do is gonna to go to downloads and then we're here we have the applications for the different operating systems. I'm running on the M1 Mac at the moment. So this is the one that I've downloaded and I'm running. And then another good thing is idea is while you're here, just downloading the SideQuest firmware, which I've got here. So once you've done all that and you open it up, this is what you're greeted with. Okay, so this again, again, this is beta. We're just, we're just testing this and we're just playing about with it, but there's some really, really cool features that I want to show you. Um, the first thing you do is you're going to plug it in and then it will go through the startup sequence. And as you'll see, I've left this as default. I've not done anything yet. Um, we're going to test it now as I go, as I go through it all. First thing to do would be to go to the firmware and you update the firmware by just clicking update firmware and then selecting it from your desktop, which is this one here. And then, do that, but I believe I am on the latest one and then it just flashes it and it goes through the process of flashing it. Then once you've done that, this is where you can do all the juicy bits. So as part of the testing, I've got access to the Discord group and there's a few um, kind of like default profiles and all your profiles sit up here, up along the top. And we have a default one and then we can create one. So let's create one and call it uh, CTA test. Okay, and then we have this one and this is where we can change it to be whatever we want it to be. And then we can also um, import one. So on uh, Discord, I've downloaded a few here. So let's import the Skyrim one. So if I click on import, it will find out when you put one of these LFG. So let's go for the Skyrim and let's open that. And it appears up here. Remember what we were saying about the profile button on the side quest, you're just gonna be clicking that to ping through three. You can have loads along here, but on the uh, side quest, you're just gonna be able to choose between three. Then if we click on Skyrim, we can see here that all of these buttons correspond to the buttons on the side quest. And it's over here on the right-hand side is where we can change them and add them to here. So as you see on the side quest, it's, a, it's still kind of like in its default. What I'm gonna do is to change that. So if you look at this and then I hit activate, there we go. So it changes all there. So 
these um, eight up here will be blue, which they are green, and these four here aren't used. So let's add something to these. Uh, let's call it, uh, we wanna do, no, let's just do the A button. So you click on A, and then the command on your keyboard, I'm gonna do A, so key A, and then we'll save that, and then that will appear down here. So we've got A button. Then all you do is you drag that A onto one of these. Let's put it onto this bottom right one here. And we know that is now A. So this on the keyboard is now A. Activate it, this will be A. So if I actually uh, clear this and I press this one, there we go, we can see that it's A. And then also what you can do is you can change the colors. So you've got some default colors here, or you can have as many different colors you like. Let's make it a nice, bright, kind of pinky purple. And all you do is you drag this color over to your A, let it go, and it appears on the screen as that pink color, but it's not on the screen, because again, you've got to activate it, and you watch on here. There we go. Now it's now that, that nice, bright pink. Then if we wanted to do another one, so let's, let's pull in this Warcraft one, open that up, and then have a look at it, and then we can have, we've got all of this set up. So you, what you can imagine is there's gonna be a community and you'll be able to download your profile for your for your favorite game for the one you use let's say if you're like for warcraft and then all these buttons would be almost already set up for you by someone else and then you just tweak it so as we can see the it's not changing on there we have to activate it so we hit activate there we go done so ab3 4 and 5 on here 6 all of them changed if we go back to the cto test and let's let's do uh, w on there save a if i accidentally get the one wrong to get rid of it get the d and just drag it to the bin gets rid of it so we'll do the d again and then you can put them wherever you want to d so this is when i do the kind of the first post shooters and i want was and d and i don't want it on the thumbstick i have it on there and then you can just pick your colors you can pick a nice bright red uh, you can drag that to one of your favorites if you want before you're making um, a change and then put them onto there so w a s and D, lovely and then along the top we'll put one uh, the one key uh, two and then three three and then we're gonna make them a nice uh, let's make that a, a really bright green color so again I'm gonna stick it on my favorites and then I'm gonna ping that over to one again we're still on the um was it the Warcraft one yeah we're still on the Warcraft profile change that to be CTA test you hit activate there we go, we've got our Res WSD and one, two and three on there and that is how quick it is. Right, this is phenomenal, okay? I can't stress how good this is going to be. Okay, so your favorite game, if you're playing with this and you're flicking, even between, flicking between three and you're hitting the three profile buttons here, you're flicking between the three games. How cool is that gonna be? So if we ping it back on to Skyrim and just activate that, um, you'll see that these are forward, back, left, run, activate. You're thinking, well, I don't know what activate is. If you just grab it and drag it up to the key command box and let go, it will tell you. So activate is on key E, always run, let go, and that's your caps lock. Then favorites, drag it up there, and that just tells you what it is, Q, just so you just so you know, so if you are gonna download anything, you can see what it is. Jump, I've seen that space bar yet. Okay, so the space bar. So as we said with the hardware, if you've got any ideas or questions or how to make this software any better, stick it down in the comments below because Matt will read that. And if you've, if you've got a really good idea, it might find its way into this software. So there we are then, there's a look at this, the hardware and the software of the side quest from Dun Wyvern. Um, using it in the past couple of weeks, it does take a bit of getting used to, but as with all coming even from a controller to a keyboard or a keyboard to a one-handed keyboard, there is a learning curve, but it's no way difficult to pick this up. I mean, this took me only a couple of hours to kind of get used to it. And then adding the profiles for all your different games is just brilliant. I absolutely love it. Okay, go and have a look at this up. I'll leave links down below where you can go and have a look at it. Keep an eye on this. Keep this in your mind because when this comes out, I think this is going to be fantastic. Okay, then anything you've got, anything you think would help this product in the comments below. Okay, that's it then. Thanks very much. Till the next video. Bye-bye.